Hi guys, welcome back. I'm back here with another example on composition of trig functions with their inverses. Guys, this time we have a cosecant outside and then we have a tan inverse and this uh, ratio here inside as well. Guys, obviously these are not inverses of each other so we cannot kind of think of canceling these out. So one has to think kind of outside of the box method, okay? Here guys, we already know when we have something like this where we cannot directly cross our things and they're not inverses of each other. And then also the fact that this ratio is something that is not on the unit circle that we cannot find on the unit circle. Uh, and then one has to kind of use a slightly different technique and then technique starts by setting this guy equal to any value where we usually like to use theta here. So I say theta, let, let this tan inverse, tan inverse of three radical seven over seven equal to theta, right? If we start with that, then obviously we know that this uh, composition just simply becomes it becomes so simple and that is the reason guys in the first place why we want to set this just equal to some angle theta or some variable for that matter so it is just cosecant of theta so finally our goal is to evaluate the cosecant of theta right and that should not be too difficult once we set this up correctly guys understanding the fact that tan inverse of a ratio of a quantity equal to theta is equivalent to saying Hey, tangent of what angle is 3 radical 7 over 7? They are basically just equivalent equation written out in two different ways. Now, this is a more user-friendly equation. This is slightly more complicated, right? But they are basically the, uh, giving us the same information or asking us for the same information. We have to find the theta, right? This theta, again, same thing here. But since we cannot find theta here directly without, I mean, if we use a calculator, yes, then we can. But here we are saying that we are not using a calculator. We're trying to do it without using a calculator. So guys, and we, we need these numbers. We need these uh, values without a calculator, right? So guys, in order to set this up, what we do is we go back to the basic definition of the tangent function. We know tangent uh, in terms of a right triangle is the opposite over adjacent, right? That's pretty basic, right? So, and the other thing we know about this is like, it, um, it's a positive value. We know tangent inverse uh, because it has to do with the inverse. It has to be in the, between negative pi over two to pi over two, it has to be in that range, right? So obviously uh, it, this positive value for tangent means that it has to be in, again, in the first quadrant because tangent is positive in the first, it is negative in the fourth, right? So we cannot have this value in the fourth quadrant. It has to be in the first quadrant. So that even makes life more easier. So I'm going to start drawing that reference triangle. Guys, keep in mind, reference triangle is something that is always drawn with respect to the x-axis, not with respect to the y-axis, okay? It is always with respect to the x-axis. This is my angle theta, uh, if I like to call this. Mostly we like to call this angle with the horizontal as our reference angle. So if I call this angle theta, then I know tangent is opposite over adjacent. So obviously my opposite would be 3 radical 7 and my adjacent is going to be 7. Now, just focus on this figure right here, this right triangle, because we did all this work to finally get it to this form, the right triangle. And the reason why we had to go through this whole steps of getting into right triangle, because this ratio is not on the unit circle. Otherwise, we have other simpler ways of doing it. Okay. So once we have this figure in front of us, then it is a very basic and simple trig uh, problem where we have a right triangle. A missing side in this case the missing side is the hypotenuse and we have to find the cosecant of theta which is pretty pretty basic so first of all we have to find the uh, the hypotenuse to find the hypotenuse i'm going to use uh, the pythagorean theorem so pythagorean theorem is uh, eight squared is seven squared plus three radical seven whole square so h will be square root of all that so if i simplify this it's going to be 49 plus, if I simplify this, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 7 is 63. And guys, if I simplify further, I'm going to get, uh, let me make sure my math is right, 12, 1, so it's 112. That is my square root of 112. But guys, we cannot just leave square root of 112 as it is because it can be simplified. If it can be simplified, one has to simplify it. So how are we going to simplify that? Let us do it on the side, square root of 112, so 112. Uh, we, I, the, I'm gonna share with you the way I like to do it. Guys, I usually start with all the, the smallest factor for this. It's two, two times five is 10. Then it is 
uh, to six, then I have two, two twos are four, two times two is four, two eight sixteen, two fourteen, two seven. And I will stop right here. Then I have two times two is four, and this is like four times, this is like four times four, which is 16 times seven, okay? Guys, if you have a calculator, then you can also just directly figure out that it is 16 times seven. And if you have other ways of doing it, that's fine. Do it the way you like to do it. But this is how I like to do it. When, I, when I'm not sure what is like, if I can directly find one of the numbers that is a perfect square. But finally, I have 16 times seven. Let us make sure that 16 times seven actually gives me this 112. Six times seven is six times 42, seven times one. So yeah. I just check, I just verify things like that. So it is 16 times seven. So square root of 16 times seven. Square root of 16 is four, square root of seven. I just got to write it. I cannot simplify this. That means my hypotenuse, what is my hypotenuse? It is four square root of seven. Guys, there are other easier ways of doing it as well. But then you have to like remind yourselves the ratios and all that. But I think this is the way that everybody knows and everybody knows the Pythagorean theorem. So I think uh, this is the way that we should we should try to find the hypotenuse. We have the hypotenuse. Now cosecant theta, cosecant theta we know is the reciprocal of the sine. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So cosecant would be hypotenuse over, hypotenuse over um, opposite. So what is hypotenuse? Let us uh, see, this is four radical seven. We did all that work to find that. Opposite guys is three radical seven. Well, that's good because radical seven and radical seven will just cross out and I'm only left with four thirds. Guys, this is the final value or final answer for this composition of cosecant with the tan inverse. So again, we have to start by setting this equal to any variable theta, then understanding that this is same as tan theta equals to that ratio, setting it up, drawing the reference triangle, uh, and then simplifying things and finding the cosecant. Guys, keep in mind, this is this is theta. We call it theta. We set it equal to theta. So we got to bring that theta here to make it easier for us to simplify. Guys, that is number five. I'm going to do one last example in this section and then we will talk about or we'll learn about solving trig equations. Guys, this all this work was done to actually make sure that we understand some basics about the inverse trig functions, how to use them, how to simplify these things. And finally, that's going to help us when we start solving trig equations. Guys, take care. I will see you next time.